So have some blocks, guys. We're going to start. We'll start on our backs, actually. Let's, um, let's have the feet the width of the mat and have the knees knock in. It's kind of a nice way to begin because it settles the low back. Yeah, see how it feels. Yes, your feet wide, your knees together. Your palms can face open. You can have one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly. Just receive some energy this morning. It is Thursday, not Friday. You're almost there. Feel the lower back spread across the mat. Nice, slow, steady breathing. Inhale through the nose to the back of the throat. Exhale through the nose to the back of the throat. begin to feel whatever it is that you're going to feel this morning. Another big breath in. Good. Exhale it all out. Blink your eyes open. Have your feet the width of the mat. Let's extend the left leg forward and hug the right knee in towards the navel. So hug the right knee in towards the navel. Give it a good little squeeze. Now pay attention to your shoulders drawing down your back, your lower back spreading across the mat, and your left calf staying intact to the floor. So what you want to focus on is a nice strong flex of that left leg. Hug the right knee in a little tighter. Yeah. Keep the right knee in close to you. Just release the arms alongside the body. Lift the back of the shoulders and the neck up off the ground and squeeze in. Float the left calf up off the ground to add in a little more. If that doesn't work for you, just keep it down. Yep. So it's like a Pilates roll up hold. Uh-huh. The neck is neutral, which means if you could look towards the sky, you're probably gonna set yourself up with the best placement of that neck. Lower back pressing in, lower belly drawing in. The breath is flowing. Extend the right leg up towards the sky. Keep the arms where they are. There's a scissoring of your inner thighs. You got it. Hold. Mm-hmm. Couple more cycles of breath. Hands can always go behind the head if it's too much. Keep the right leg up. Lift the left leg up to meet the right leg. Good, yep, you got it. Both legs are up towards the sky. Hands can go behind the head if that's easier for you. Keep the legs right straight up and down. You're just gonna take little baby crunches straight up for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Keep the right hand behind the head and reach the left arm across your body. So reach the left hand to like you're like, almost like you're gonna reach for the right toes for one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Left hand behind the head, switch sides. So go across the body. So it's like this isometric abdominal crunch for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The legs are going to go a little bit on an angle. So the hands can stay behind the head for just a moment. The legs are a little bit on like this and then you'll just reach the arms forward hands in prayer for one two three four five six seven eight nine ten last ten nine eight seven six five four three two one hug the left knee and right leg down give it a good little squeeze let the shoulders draw down the back you got it keep the left leg where it is reach the arms alongside the body lift the shoulders the back of the head the neck up off the ground keep the neck very neutral so you're not crunching your neck now decide if you want to add the right calf into the thing mm -hmm, into the thing you know the thing that we're doing float it up off the ground uh-huh so you're just kind of in this little isometric squeeze the left knee is in the right leg is out. The arms are either forward. If the neck is bothering you, hands can always go behind the head. 
but you want to be looking up towards the sky so you know you're not crunching your neck. And you're just kind of hugging in that center line. The core is working, the breath is flowing, you're very happy, at least you tell yourself you are. Float the left leg straight up, so now there's a scissoring of the legs. So the right leg is forward, the left leg is lifted. There's a scissoring of your inner thighs, a squeezing of your abdominal wall. You got it, Jody. you're right. Right leg is down, left leg is up. There you go. That's it, right there, scissoring in, holding, breathing, lengthening, maintaining for another few breaths. Hug both knees in towards the chest, give them a big squeeze. Rock and roll a couple times across the length of the spine. Come up slow, cross your ankles and find your way into your first downward facing dog. I always like to start with a little ab work if I have time because it really puts the body into a nice position. Makes you a little bit more aware of that center line. Take up a lot of space on the mat this morning. Hands are the width of the mat most likely. Index fingers are turned forward a little bit out. You got it. Feet are about hips width distance apart. Yes, yeah, spread your toes wide across the mat. Activate the front of the shins. So as you plug your hands down, feel your thumb, your index finger, and your baby finger. Feel your outer triceps wrap in. Alexi, take a little bit of a bigger stance. Like what? Like take up more space, like in the length of the mat. There you go. Perfect. The center of your heels in time can melt towards the ground and the back side of the body is going to get a really nice opening. Looks good, Katie. Roll forward to plank position in one sweet motion. Plank position. So when you come from the first dog to plank, sometimes it's not quite right. So you have to align yourself. You want your shoulders directly over elbows, elbows over wrists. We want to avoid looking in, keep the neck very neutral, which means look forward towards the front skinny edge of the mat. Fire up the sides of your triceps, feel your hands plug down into the mat and bring a little bit more weight forward. Now, if you're here and you really feel like you can't maintain the proper alignment, then please drop your knees down and support the pose. Not a problem at all. Let the shoulders kind of move away. Nice. Fix your eyes and just maintain a nice cut, calm, steady breath as you hold here for three more breaths. Hips go up and back, down dog. Your hands and feet now have most likely found their place. Great, roll forward plank position, one sweet motion. Now you're set. Good, pit of the belly draws in, neck stays nice and neutral. Drop your knees down for a little bit of support, bring your weight forward, and let's lower together halfway at a ha half push up here. So half push up, just be careful, man, that you don't drop your shoulders too low. Elbows alongside your body, you have that. Just don't dump your shoulders down. Restraighten your arms to a plank position. Hips go up and back, downward facing dog. So the modification really creates some support for the body. Mm -hmm. Roll forward plank, one nice motion. Halfway to a push up that works for you. Maybe the knees down is what suits you today. Elbows close to the side body. Restraighten your arms to a plank position. Hips go up and back, downward facing dog. Good, breathe your right leg up and back to a three-legged down dog. When you lift your leg, lift from the inner thigh. At least you brought water to that. Yeah, step in the right direction. Point your right toes, come forward, hug your right knee in towards your chest. Give it a nice active juicy squeeze. Arms are straight up and down. You wanna look forward a little with your eyes and then step your right foot forward and through in a low lunge. Great. Spring to the top of the mat in one piece. The left foot meets the right foot. Maybe a little separation before, between your feet. Long spine on the inhale. Hands compressed to your shins. If they don't make it, exhale, fold. Let your head go. Root to rise. Come all the way up. We seem really energetic this morning. Drag the hands to prayer. Drop your arms. Sometimes when you're the most tired, you have the best practices. Just keep that in mind. Arms go straight up towards the sky whatever it is that you're feeling. Dive over, bend knees, forward fold, let your head go. Long spine to set it up. Take a big step back with your right leg. Then the left leg joins the party in a plank. When you hit the plank position, decide how you want to take it today. Maybe you're just holding plank. Maybe you're lowering halfway. Let's take on a push-up of choice here or just maintain that plank position. Revisit plank. Arms go straight up and down. Hips go up and back, down dog. 
We'll breathe together the left leg up and back, three-legged down dog, lift from your inner thigh. Try not to just fling it up into the sky, yep. Come forward, hug your left knee in and up. Give it a good yummy squeeze. Arms are straight up and down. The breath is smooth flowing, flowing through your body. Look to the top of the mat, step your left foot forward and through. Bring the right foot to meet it, top of mat. Nice long spine, always keep that weight forward. Exhale, fold. Root to rise, come all the way up. Drag it to prayer, drop your arms. Arms go straight up towards the sky. Dive over bent knees, forward fold, let the head go. Long spine to prepare yourself. Two big steps back to plank, you pick left, right, and then right leg. Halfway to a push up that works best. Revisit plank position, hips go up and back, down dog. Moving and breathing together, right leg, breathe it up and back, three-legged down dog. Come forward, hug your right knee in towards your navel, picking up the pace a little bit. Step the right foot forward and through, be on the fingertips. Spring to the top of the mat in one piece. Long spine on the inhale, exhale, fold. Root to rise, come all the way up, anchor. Drag it to prayer, drop your arms. Arms go straight up. Dive over bent knees, forward fold. Long spine to prepare. Right foot takes a nice big step back. Left leg joins, plank. Nice smooth movements. Halfway to a push up. Plank position, we go back up. Hips go up and back, down dog. Breathe the left leg up and back. Three legged down dog, lift with ease. Come forward, hug your left knee in and up. Give it a good little squeeze. Step the left foot forward and through. Right foot meets top of mat. Long spine on the inhale, exhale, folds, root to rise, come all the way up, drag it to prayer, drop your arms, arms go straight up, dive over bent knees, forward fold, long spine to prepare, big two steps back, right to the back of the mat, plank, halfway to a push up, this time we can pull through an up dog or cobra if you're taking that on in your body, I don't have one field. Hips go up and back, downward facing dog. Deep breath in, full breath out. Arms stay active and straight. Look where you wanna go. You can step, step, you can float to the top of the mat. I don't know how, how bouncy you feel. Long spine on the in. Exhale, fold. Root to rise, come all the way up. Drag it to prayer. Drop your arms. Arms go straight up. Dive over bent knees, forward fold. Long spine to prepare, step, step to plank. If you're gonna hop, just reminding you, you should land with bent elbows. That was nice, Hallie. Up dog is smooth. Hips go up and back, downward facing dog. Spread your palms wide, make that connection to the mat. Arms stay active and straight. Look where you wanna go, step or float, top of mat. Long spine to prepare, exhale, fold. Root to rise, come all the way up. Drag it to prayer, drop your arms. Arms go straight up towards the sky. Dive over bent knees, forward fold. Long spine to prepare, step or float through a vinyasa. So now we're just moving and breathing and just getting out of our own way. Up dog pulls you through your body. Hips go up and back, down dog. Each one getting a little better. At least we like to tell ourselves that. Arms are active, look where we wanna go. Step or float, top of mat. Long spine on the inhale, exhale, fold. Root to rise, come all the way up. Drag it to prayer. Last one, drop your arms. Arms go straight up towards the sky. Dive over bent knees, forward fold. Long spine to prepare. Step or float through a vinyasa. Up dog pulls you through your body. Yes, hips go up and back, downward facing dog. Breathe your right leg up and back, three-legged down dog. Lift from that inner thigh. Come forward, take your right knee to the back of the right tricep. So just in the general direction, what you want to keep in mind is that you're not taking your right hip totally out of alignment. So everyone's going to be a little bit different in where it's located. That looks good, Katie. Re-extend the right leg up and back, three-legged down dog. Same deal here. You're going to come forward. This time you're going to cross it over to the inside. And the same thing, if you're taking your right hip like all the way, all the way, all the way over, do a little less and just go where the range of motion actually is. That's it. Extend your right leg up and back, three-legged down dog. Come forward, hug your right knee back in. Give it a nice little squeeze. 
And then step the right foot all the way forward and through into a low lunge. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Root to rise, high lunge, crescent lunge. No one said it was ever easy, right? It never gets easy. It gets different. It changes on a day-to-day. -day. I think that makes it unique. Soften the back left knee. Listen, if you're having one of those days that you just feel a little beat up on the mat, listen to all the suggestions I make regarding um, modifications and take all of them. So softening the back knee is a great way to kind of find that space. Dropping the back knee, if you really feel like the balance isn't there this morning, side ribs are nice and long, arms are energized up towards the sky. We are gonna try and just build a little bit of momentum here just because I feel like our energy needs a little, little something. So see how this goes. Start with the hands in prayer at heart. You're gonna step up. So a lot of times it's more like a drag and it may be a drag cam where you kind of do it really, really slow. Yeah. Yeah, start with the hands in prayer just so you kind of feel gathered and then step it back and then regrow the arms. Yeah, try it again. You'll drag the hands to prayer and as you drag, you'll step up, do it really slow. And as you step back, the arms go back up. You got it, nice slow movements. Drag the hands to prayer, drag the left leg up. Re-extend the arms, crescent lunge, hold. Hands to frame your front foot, pause. Keep the left, uh, right leg where it is, turn the back left foot on a sharp angle. Amanda, take a little bit of a wider step. And what I mean by that is, yes, you got it. Your feet width. Hug your right hip in. Back foot turned on a nice firm angle. Rise warrior one now. There's a gripping of your right hip. Your back left toes are pivoted enough forward that the left ribs can spin forward with you. Yes. And if your lower back feels super sensitive, what I suggest here is to have the torso pitched a little bit more forward. And I find that takes us out of the low backs. I guess everyone's backs are sensitive this morning. Yeah. Basically, if like you're approaching 40 or past 40, everybody pitch their torso forward. Or if you have small children that you're lifting up and you're not quite 40, yes, just join us in this experience. Take the hands down to the ground. Chaturanga push up. Yeah. <laughs> Upward facing dog. I'm telling you, I turned 40 in like my entire practice. It didn't go to shit. It just totally changed. Yeah. And it's called self-awareness. Breathe the left leg up and back. Flag it down, dog. It's called A-G-E. <laughs> Come forward. Drag your left knee to the back of the left tricep, just in the general direction. So don't get so caught up. I'm like, I got to get it to touch. We're not interested in that. Re-extend the leg up and back, three-legged down dog. So if you're doing this right, you're doing it slow and you feel a lot. Come forward, same deal, but this time you're gonna cross over. Jody. just make sure you're not taking your hip all the way with you. So go more like the knee, just a little bit over. That's much better. Extend the leg up and back. Come forward, hug it in, straight in, basic here. Look forward, step your left foot forward and through. Before you just spring up into the crescent lunge, get your feet rooted, get anchored, and then rise, high lunge. And then pay attention to this high lunge. Like maybe you need to soften that back knee to kind of find the placement. Maybe you need to modify completely. The same deal, you're on your left leg, you'll drag your hands to prayer, and you'll drag your right leg up with a little bit of power, flex. Re-extend the arms, take a giant step back. Drag the hands to prayer, drag the leg up. Slow, steady wins this race. Arms grow up, giant step back. Drag the hands, drag the leg up with you. Anchor, stand tall. Arms extend up, crescent lunge, hold. Hands to frame your front foot, pause. Your feet are kind of already set for you. Just turn your back foot on a sharp angle. Pay attention to that back left, uh, back left hip and make sure you grip it in. Your left hip has to like kind of hug and then rise warrior one. Anchor your feet and come up warrior one. Same deal. If you need to pitch forward a little because it takes the pressure off that low back, please do so. Pay attention to that back right leg. It kind of trumps the pose. 
Hands to frame your front foot. We'll find our way through a vinyasa of choice. So some of us add or subtract push-ups. Same deal with the back bend. And then we meet in a downward facing dog, really individualizing your practice this morning and listening to what your body needs. Look where you want to go, step or float to the top of the mat. Long spine to prepare. Exhale, fold. Weights in your heels for your first chair. Decide if you want your feet all the way together, maybe a little separation. Shoot up to stand up, drag it to prayer, drop your arms. So from the top of this whole deal, here we go. Arms go straight up, heavy in your heels for chair pose. Weight moves way back and there's a natural curve in your spine. Exhale, fold over your legs, let it go. Long spine to set you up. You'll step, you'll float, you'll skip, you'll crawl, whatever it is. There's no judgment. The up dog is a real smooth operation. Hips go up and back, downward facing dog. The right foot lands, the back foot turns. We come up together, warrior one, making any adjustments you need to make this work for you this morning. Hands come down to frame your front foot through a vinyasa or maybe you just hold in a basic pose. When you get to your dog, the left foot lands, the back foot turns, together we come up, warrior one. Nice smooth movements. To the floor we go, chaturanga push-up. The up dog is smooth if you're taking it. Hips go up and back, downward facing dog. The arms stay straight, look where you wanna go. Step or float to the top of the mat. Long spine on the inhale, exhale, fold. Heavy in your heels for chair, we revisit. Shoot up to stand up, drag it to prayer, drop your arms. Together again, arms go straight up, heavy in your heels, chair. Dive over bent knees, forward fold. Long spine to prepare, step or float. However you're moving is just right. The up dog is smooth if you're adding it in. Hips go up and back, downward facing. The right foot lands, the back foot turns. Together we come up, warrior one. To the floor we go, chaturanga push up. Upward facing dog, smooth. Hips go up and back, down dog. The left foot lands, the back foot turns, rise. To the floor we go, chaturanga. Up dog pulls you through. Hips go up and back, down dog. Arms stay active, look where you wanna go. Step or float, top of mat. Long spine, fold. I have those pills, I'll bring them to you. I'll drug deal while I'm at it. Yeah, sit deep, chair pose. Yeah, all the drugs you can get. Yeah, no, I see what I got. <laughs> Shoot up to stand up. I'll bring you the cough pill. Drag your hands to prayer. Drop your eyes. It's the best we can get. We're really, we really stooped. Arms go straight up. Heavy into chair. Yeah. Dive over bent knees. Forward fold. Long spine to prepare. Step or float. Up dog pulls you through. Hips go up and back. Down dog. Right foot forward, back foot turns, rise, warrior. One of them retreat once and I had a cough. And every time I laid in Shavasana, I had a coughing fit. And it became like a thing because there's a lot of Shavasana and retreats. Chaturanga, I was like, oh, the worst. Up dog, downward facing. Just keep moving and breathing, no worries. Left foot lands, back foot turns, rise, warrior one. To the floor we go, Chaturanga push up. Upward facing dog pulls you through. Hips go up and back, downward facing. Look to your hands, hop your feet through and lay all the way down and bring your block with you. When you hit the floor, bring the block in between your hands. So it's gonna go like this. Yep. You're gonna flex your feet really, really strong. Mm -hmm. You're gonna crunch the block forward with the legs really engaged, the lower back down, the neck is neutral. She should feel this through your low back, your lower belly. Yep. And then the arms go back and then you're gonna pull it forward and the arms go back and you pull it forward. And now on the forward, you're gonna crunch forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Keep flexion, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, 
five, four, three, two, one. The left leg will stay down or it could bend. Just keep that in mind if lower back sensitive, you decide the right leg's gonna lift up. The block and the toes are gonna touch and you're gonna lower it down, arms hover, leg hovers, okay? Bring it up, one. Yep, lower it down. Bring it up, two. You got it. Lower it down. I want you to find a lot of length through your body. Keep the left leg very engaged if it's straight. Crunch it up. Perfect. Breathe on the exhale. Bring it up. If the left leg is bent, that's fine as well. Nice long body. Four. Good. Three. Two. And one. Switch. Exhale the breath, let it go for a breath, and then here we go. One, two, you got it. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Keep the right leg down, four more. Nine, 10, last two, 11, last one, 12. Good, hug your knees and give them a big squeeze. Rock and roll a bunch of times, cross the ankles, step through a vinyasa. Yep, move through an up dog, it could feel pretty good. Hips go up and back, downward facing dog. Breathe your right leg up and back. Come forward, hug your right knee straight in, give it a good, good super duper squeeze. Step your right foot all the way forward and through. Grab that same block, place it to the instep of your right foot, turn your back foot on a sharp angle. You're setting your feet up or warrior two from the ground up. Yeah, right hand down, left arm open. The block can go low, can go medium, it can go high. Yeah. When I had my knee operated on, I felt like my back was compromised because the way I was like holding everything. I did a lot of that work because I feel like it puts your spine just in the right alignment. Yeah, it's really good. So I'll try and squeeze it in to teach you guys how to do that. There's a little lean back into that inner right thigh. Yeah, if you feel like any too much of this is going on, that you're pressing into the lower back too much or you're just not in the right spot, you pop out of it and you bring your arm to the top of the thigh, okay? The left arm straight up or you can wrap it behind your back and they only go halfway today so don't get all caught up on it yeah there's a turning of those bottom ribs the crown of the head's moving over that front right foot nice your breath is with you you're feeling you're excited you're changing your mindset that's what yoga does for us More cycles of breath. Mm -hmm. If you took a little bindy action, just release the arm straight up towards the sky and let your top arm and your back leg pull you up warrior two. Now, sometimes when you get to the warrior two, you actually need to take a little bit of a longer stance. Roll that right thigh open, spread across your body. Yeah. Lengthen the tailbone, soften the shoulders down the back and just pay attention. Are you giving enough energy to your front arm and your back arm? Maybe close your eyes and just settle in here for a few really good breaths. It's just a feeling. Roll your right thigh open. So think inner part of your right leg, roll to the outside of your right baby toe as you anchor and sit deeper. Calming the body, calming the mind, calming the breath. Flip the palm, reverse the warrior. This is soft, subtle movement. If you're not jamming into your low back, be mindful of that. Keep sitting into your front thigh. Circle it to the floor to a plank position. Together, we'll lean on our left hand for your favorite version of Vashi Satsana side plank. And I call it out that way because everyone's got a different way of taking this. Your bottom knee can drop to the floor. You can stagger your feet. You can stack your feet. You can add in some options of a tree pose. Just pay attention that you're not rolling your right hip way open. It's stacked over your left hip. Your side body is nice and long. Maybe even you're taking the option of your arm 
reaching forward. So your side body gets a nice, really long stretch. Straight forward towards the mirrored wall would be the direction. Baby finger pivots towards the ground, so the shoulders in the right rotation. That was really nice, Alexi. Good adjustments. Plank position, very slow. Chaturanga push-up if you have it in you. Upward facing dog only if it feels good. Hips go up and back, downward facing. You breathe the left leg up and back, three-legged down dog. Come forward and hug your left knee in. Give it a good little squeeze. Yeah, the left leg now. Step the left foot all the way forward and through. You're not coming up. You're grabbing your block. We're catting it to the instep of that left foot, any direction that works for you. Your back foot turning into a warrior two position to so go instep of the foot, Natalie, just for today's practice. Yes, left palm down, right arm open. You're breathing yourself open to your B variation of extended side angle. You're tracking the left knee directly over the left ankle. Your left hip is gripping in. And if you're able to, your bottom left ribs are turning from left to right. Your right arm can reach straight up. It can go behind your back, maybe just halfway, maybe all the way. But keep gripping your left hip in and turning those bottom ribs. Now lean the torso back a little bit so the crown of the head kind of comes over that front foot. Nice. And then you get to the pose. It's important that you kind of just settle into it, wherever it's taking you today. We'll unravel the right arm if you took into a half bind or full bind. And then from the top right arm and the back right leg, we pull up together warrior two. Widening the stance if we need to, rolling that inner left thigh open, lengthening the tailbone, and then finding some stability in this pose. So as you sit, lengthen your tailbone, roll that inner thigh open, breathe across your body using your right arm and your left arm as evenly as you can. Then close your eyes and hold here. Letting yourself just feel, feel the effects of the practice. It's pretty neat. Keeping the strong shape, flip the palm, reverse the warrior, let the side body open, continuously bending into that front left thigh. Circle the hands to frame your front foot. We'll hit plank together and lean on the right hand for your favorite version. Yeah. Staggering the feet, stacking the feet, dropping the bottom knee. I mean, there's so many options here that could work. Adding in the tree, floating the foot, top arm can wrap up and forward. Trying to keep the two hips on top of one another, though. Yeah, the right, the bottom uh, top hip likes to open. We want it to be stacked. Couple more breaths. Nice and slow, plank position. That was great. Halfway to your push up. Up dog pulls you through. Hips pull you up and back, downward facing. Look where you want to go. Step or float to the top of the mat. Get there nice and light. Long spine on the inhale. Exhale, fold. Sitting into your chair pose. Weight goes into your heels. Drag the hands to prayer at heart. Inhale the breath. Exhale the breath. We're going to twist to the right. So depending on the nature of your low spine, some of us hook, some of us don't hook. Watch the two knees stay together, lined up. Weight is in your heels. The left knee has a tendency of sliding past the right. Yes. Nice and even. You can do anything you want with your arms to make the pose feel successful for you. Looking sideways, looking up, try not to look back. Point your right elbow, Katie, up towards the sky. Point it, point it, point it. There you go. The breath is flowing, filling the shape. Heavy in your legs, chair pose, pull it around. Stay with it, you got this. Drag the hands to prayer. Inhale your breath. Exhale, we're twisting the opposite direction towards the mirrored wall. Same deal. So you want to make sure your right knee doesn't slide past your left. How do I do that? Okay. That's coming from your hips, actually. So just trying to create some symmetry in the body, feet, shins, knees, everything kind of creating that little box shape. Point the left elbow. Sit deeper, Natalie, if you can. Crown of the head's moving forward. It's part of the spine. 
and the breath. You're definitely not holding your breath. You'll go to a deep, dark place. So just keep breathing. Two more. Chair pose, pull it around. Awesome job. Sit a little deeper in your chair because you all can. You're stronger than you think you are. And then shoot up with power to stand up, drag it to prayer, drop your arms. Place your block at the top of the mat. You'll need it in a sec. Mm -hmm. Stand on your right leg and bend your left leg up into a tree pose. Yeah, the left leg's gonna bend up into a tree. Hands come to prayer. Anywhere across the instep of that uh, right leg, just make sure your foot isn't kind of jamming into your knee. So it can be down low too, if you need it to be. Quiet your mind. Grow the branches of your tree if you feel that that works. Arms can go out, they can go up, they can clasp. You can start to play with closing your eyes, taking a little juicy back bend. Grip your right hip in, stand up tall on your right leg. Keep the right leg and the focus on the right leg. Hands will come to prayer for a moment. Good. We're going to find Ardhan Chandrasana from here. So you're going to start to pitch forward with your torso, reach for that block, and unravel that left leg open. Arda. It's a fun little transition. Set up your block on a nice high setting to give you a little amp up. The block's enough forward, and the right foot must stay forward. Soften behind the right knee. When you lift from your inner left thigh, flex your left toes strong, and then open up. Add in whatever it is that you feel that you need to like find success in this pose right here. If not, just stay in its basic form. I love the basic Arda. And if you fall, opportunity to restart again is always there for you. Couple more breaths, you're doing great. If you bound yourself up at all, just release into a regular Arda. Transition will be very slow and I'm pretty sure you can all do it. We're gonna step back into a triangle pose, move the block with you, do it nice and slow. And if it doesn't work out, you just come up and reset. When you use your block and triangle, triangle, just keep in mind that the block goes generally to the outside of the right calf. I personally like to pull up on the front of the right shin. So Alexi, take your left foot and open it up a little. Open it. Yeah, and take it back a little. So you want your feet kind of set like this. And then you want to lean back. So depending on the body alignment, uh, some people like their triangles a little tighter and shorter. Some of them like them a little longer and wider. So it just depends on your body. Lean back. And then you want this kind of general feeling of a pulling up on the right shin. So you're really spreading your collarbone and extending through your side body. Look sideways, look up. Nice work. Circle the hands to frame your front foot. Let's step through a vinyasa just to kind of keep ourselves moving here. Chaturanga push up if you have it in the cards. Up dog, hips go up and back, downward facing dog. Good, look where you wanna go. Step or float to the top of the mat, get there nice and light. Long spine on the inhale, exhale, fold into yourself. Root to rise, come all the way up, ground yourself. Drag your hands to prayer at heart and drop your arms. Standing on your left leg, bending your right leg up into a version of tree that works for you. Mm -hmm. Hands can gather to a prayer at heart center. The standing left leg is the focal point. That external rotation of your right leg is next, okay? Grow the branches of your tree. Arms extend, they can go straight up, they can be open a little. the opportunity to be still, to just take on this basic pose, to quiet everything and just be present.
hands drift to prayer. So the best way to transition, attention to the left leg, a gentle tip forward with just the torso, a reach for the block, and then an unraveling into that Arda. And it kind of happens in one motion. And if it doesn't, you just reset and give it another whirl. Placing the block in a nice high setting is definitely helpful. Enough forward and over to the left. It's almost a little too much, Katie. Bring it a little closer to you. Right hand to hip and then you grow. Right arm up. Flex your right toes. There you go. And then add in whatever it is that you did on the other side to make it feel good. Stay with it. Nice, Hallie, really solid. Release any binds that maybe you took on. Focus on that left leg. Now make the transition as smooth as possible. So it's a very, very light, soft step. And then you arrive in triangle. Pull up anywhere across the front of the shin. Utilize the block or reset all together if you need to. Turn your right toes, Amanda, a little bit forward. And then pull up on the front of the shin. So you're really getting this nice lift. Nice. Side ribs are long. So your left hand can be anywhere along the front of that left leg. So if the back feels tight, maybe you're up a little higher. There's a little lean back, side ribs long, and then the right arm grows open. Back leg strong, left knee has a little soft bend to it. Yeah, that's a good little adjustment. We got this, guys. Couple more breaths. Circle the hands to frame your front foot plank position. When you hit plank, lower halfway down to a push-up. Up dog pulls you through. Hips go up and back, down dog. Only one little more standing sequence. It's just basically every posture I know left in it. Yes. The right foot steps forward, crescent lunge. I'm just kidding. It's good to laugh. Rise. We will challenge you, crescent lunge. Let's wrap the left arm underneath the right arm. Yeah, and then let's step up into eagle. Yeah, and just do your best with this. And I was talking about in my own personal practice, like my foot doesn't wrap around anymore, which is fine. Amy's showing a good option of what to do if that doesn't happen. The block can be a great support. Squeeze the legs, squeeze the arms. Now also keep in mind, you want your neck very neutral. We don't want to yank down on the elbows. The elbows get a nice little lift and the weight stays back into that right heel. So this is a fun little transition. So I want you to unravel back to a crescent lunge and do it as seamlessly as you kind of got in. We've kind of been practicing this a little bit. Yeah, that was great. Now drag the hands to prayer. Lean way out and we'll hook the elbow for the twist. And if you need to drop your back knee, this is a good one to kind of modify. Just make sure the knee is not slamming into the ground. It's a little bit more on an angle. When you hook your elbow to the outside of the right thigh, your spine stays long. We look sideways or we look up. We avoid trying to look back. When we look back, we round. The back leg is nice and engaged. There's a scissoring of your inner thighs. There's a little lean back action. The right foot, Jode, is too far forward. Bring it more so it's under the knee, and that's going to give you a little bit more. Uh-huh. Couple more breaths. As you exhale breath, you turn and open more. Hands to frame your front foot. Pause. Straighten the right leg on track and step your back foot in. So it's a little smaller, tighter stance. Come to the fingertips. Then slide your hands to your hips. Come halfway up. And actually, let's come the rest of the way up just so we can set up properly. The right hand stays on your hip. The left arm extends up nice and big. Inhale the breath and we'll come halfway down. We'll steer our hips back and we'll come the rest of the way down. Yes. Twisting triangle. That's where you're at. Hand can stay on the flat part of your back to kind of give you some feedback of what's happening in the body. Yeah, and it can stay there the whole time. You're high up on the block for the majority of us because it's keeping us out of our shoulder girdle. 
Yes. And broaden and twist open. Anchor that back leg, scissor your inner and outer thighs together. It's a great hamstring release. Hands to frame that front foot, fold over your right leg and let it go. Let your head go. Breathe your right hip up and back and just breathe into the hamstring, the meaty part of your legs as you let it go. Yep, you could use the blocks, of course. You could drag your hands a little further back. You could drag them a little more forward, forward. Sometimes when I take this pose, I like to experience um, bringing one arm a little bit more forward. Right, right, yeah, and just seeing like how I feel. Like sometimes the left arm forward in this feels a little better because it kind of elongates that left back leg. It doesn't change straightening that front leg at all. Hands to the earth, you'll step to a dog. Just step down dog. When you get to the down dog, decide if you want to add in another vinyasa or maybe you're happy with being here. The left foot will then land forward for crescent lunge, rise. Crescent lunge, we come up. Wrap your right arm underneath your left arm. Wrap your right thigh around your left. If you can't find your right and your left, just kind of go with what feels like you haven't been there yet. Yeah. No one's being too picky. When you sit into eagle, you must bend your left leg. So you can think, think about yourself being in a chair. You're just wrapped up in that chair pose. Pay attention to your neck. Make sure you're not dropping your neck back. Keep your neck neutral. Lift the elbows. So you're getting a nice little stretch through that upper thoracic. Weights in that standing heel. Squeeze. To get out of the pose, you'll just unravel and land light, crescent lunge. Try and make it like a little dance. High in the ball of your back foot, drag your hands to prayer. Lean way out, hook the elbow and twist. Modify if you need, dropping your back knee. Amanda, slide your right knee back a little so it's more on an angle. There you go, and that's gonna get into your psoas. If the back leg is lifted, it's really engaged. Point the left elbow towards the sky, grip your left hip in. And then a subtle little lift of your right hip. Sometimes it gets a little sad. Twist open. Right here in this moment, opportunity to breathe, low, low, grow, and learn from yourself. So twist open a little bit deeper. Two more. Hands to frame your front foot, pause. Straighten your left leg and scoot your back foot in enough that your feet are about three feet, three and a half feet apart if you're, more if you're a little more tall. Come to the fingertips, long spine, slide your hands to your hips, we come halfway up and actually let's come the whole way up. Setting up for twisting triangle, left hand stays on your hip, right arm grows big. Think about that back leg, it's kind of charging up the pose. Long spine on the inhale, exhale, you're gonna come all the way forward and reach for that block. The block can be low, medium, high. Your hand can also just rest on the shin. The left arm peels open, or maybe you're opting for hand on the flat part of your back to kind of give you that feedback. Steer your hips back. Let the shoulders slide down the back. So your arms are set up like a twisting, like a, like a side plank. Yeah. The breath is kind of anticipating and flowing the pose, like getting you where you need to go without anticipating is what I'm trying to say. The breath kind of feeds the posture. Anchor that back leg, lift that back hip just a tiny bit and twist a little deeper. Two more. Nice work. Exhale the breath, fold over that leg. Let it go. Use blocks to lift you up. Maybe play around with sliding your right hand a little bit more forward. Yeah. Just a smidgen forward, kind of gives that back leg a little juice. Your front leg probably has a deep bend. No worries at all. Two more. 
hands to the earth directly underneath the shoulders, just kick the blocks to the side, step to a dog. When you arrive in dog, like an ocean wave with a little bit of power, roll forward plank, halfway to a push up. Up dog, slides you through your body. Hips go up and back, downward facing. Let's land the right knee forward for a half pigeon. Together we land. If this does not work in your body, please let me know. We'll find an alternative. Melt yourself down. Yeah, wherever you are in this posture, just breathe into it. Go in a little deeper. Step to a dog and let's switch sides. I was just grateful the music worked. <laughs> yeah, swing, swing your left leg forward and land. We take nothing for granted. Fold into this. So whatever you're feeling on this side, just breathe into it. This side is tight, Natalie. Five more breaths. Enjoy it if you can. Good, come up nice and slow first. Lean on your left side and swing your right leg forward. So when you come forward now, bring both legs forward, move your blocks with you, lay down on your backs and we'll set up for some bridge. Yeah, move the blocks with you and set your two blocks up like a set of railroad tracks and you can put your feet on them. Definitely if the lower back is feeling tight, I recommend this. I only have one here, so it's a very bad example, but it's essentially the same way that you would take it, just have your feet elevated. Mm -hmm. Fingertips will skim the backs of the blocks instead of the blocks back of the, uh, the heels. Mm -hmm. Good. And then you'll lift up. Interlacing the hands or roboting the arms alongside the body or maybe just having the arms by the side body. You don't want to feel any pinching in your low back. Yeah. And if it's too much pressure on your knees, the suggestion would just be to bring the blocks a little bit more forward. If it doesn't work, you dump it and do what does work. Yep, sometimes the block underneath the tailbone just feels better. Good work. Exhale the breath, lower down, take a breath in, take a breath out. We're gonna do one more. Lift up, bridge, wheel, supported bridge, whatever works for you now, you can dump those blocks if, it doesn't, if you're not into it. If you're on the blocks and you wanna lift up into a full wheel, give it a whirl, it kind of elevates you, yeah. Steer your feet forward, inner thighs, forward and down. Lift straight up. Exhale the breath, lower down. If you're on a block, move it out of the way. Hug your knees in towards your chest. Give them a nice squeeze. 
Reach for the outer blades of your feet for what we call happy baby pose, dead bug. You're gonna pull your knees down around your rib cage. If reaching for the feet is unavailable, reach for the backs of the thighs and create that same action, yep. See if you can get rid of the neck kind of jutting forward, soften the shoulders down the back. Hug the knees back in towards the chest. Give them one last little squeeze here. And just, we'll windshield wash our knees to kind of finish off with a little, a little twist. Take the feet the width of the mat like we began. Drop your knees over to the right. So one leg is gonna be higher than the other, yes. And if you wanna take your right foot on top of your left um, IT band, that's gonna kind of create a little bit of a, an IT band stretch. So your left foot, your right foot, sorry, is on top of your left thigh. There you go. Let the foot kind of slide off the thigh and then roll up to center and you'll switch the other direction. So the best way to get in is the feet, the width of the mat, and then drop your knees over to the left. Yeah, so the left leg is a little higher. The left ankle can then kind of slide up onto the top of that right thigh. Yeah, nice. Let the foot slide off first and then roll up to center. Once you neutralize everything, just extend the right leg out, the left leg out, and you'll slide into Shavasana this morning, complete rest. Make yourself comfortable, maybe a block under your head, maybe underneath your legs, your sweatshirt or towel over your eyes. Nice big breath in, and on the exhale, just melt into the ground. Big full breath in, loud, cool exhale breath out. Arms up over the top of the head, full stretch. Hug your knees in towards your chest, give them a dynamic squeeze. And move with ease as you come up to your finishing you know, position. Maybe it's laying down, maybe it's laying on your side, maybe it's sitting up. Either which way, try and keep your eyes closed and just be in the final moments of the practice. Let the hands gather to a prayer and have a moment with yourself, being grateful. So sometimes you show up and you don't know how your body or your mind are gonna react to the practice. And then at the end, you're like, oh, wow, I actually learned something new, something better, something more unique. Be grateful for that. Lift your head, open your eyes. Namaste. Go out there, have an awesome afternoon. It was nice seeing you all. I'm here again tomorrow. If you're looking for a second dose, <laughs> until we meet again.